of the UNLV Rebels, and we're here to present to you the world's most famous female daredevil, Shara Stanley. Flamboyant, maybe, but beautiful. Oh, thank you. Whatever happened to the quiet housewife with the, uh, the poodles and the home-baked cookies <laughs> oh, and the was, rose garden? That was four years ago and half a dozen crashes. <laughs> no, after Tom was killed, I, uh, well, I guess the role of bereaved housewife wasn't exactly my style, and Tom wouldn't have wanted it. That, that man could fly a bike. You give Tom Stanley anything on wheels, and he would give the audience goosebumps. Look as lemons. Guy was really radical. Oh, come on, Bill. Now, you're not supposed to be drinking. That bourbon's poison to you now. It's gonna kill you. Well, that jump is gonna kill you. Let's both stop. Oh, I gotta go. Uh, dinner. Oh, I'll call you. Okay. Dan, you got a few minutes. I'd like to talk to you. It's important. Hmm? Uh, not here, though. Sure, Bill. What are you doing out here, Bill? It's dangerous for bookkeepers to be in the fresh air. It's, it's these. I, I just got a second billing from the engineering firms. They sent duplicates of their reports. Well, that's normal. Just give me the reports and pay them. Nothing to get excited about. Oh, but you, you, don't, you don't understand. I glanced through them. Reports show that the jump is too risky. There's no margin for error. Relax. It's obviously a mistake. Just pay the bills. But Shara could get killed. There was a mix-up in these reports. I'll take care of them. We all care too much for Shara to see an accident. Coleman will go over the reports with you. Sheriff says you're not supposed to be drinking that stuff. Listen, Daniel. Drinking is a natural act, even if it is a slow death. At least I can always change my mind and think if I choose to. Flying through the air 165 feet on a 400-pound motorcycle is called sudden death. Dan, you've got to talk Shara out of this. I thought you were just being cynical, but you're serious about this, aren't you? Damn right I am. You know, she's been doing stunts like this for years. I mean, she don't know what she's doing. She might have up till now, but this stunt's no good. It's, it's impossible. You told her all this? All the time. All the time. Hell, I'm the only guy around here willing to level with her. Listen, I've seen that bike wiggle in the wind at 110 feet. 165 feet, forget it. The stunt stinks. Well, why is she doing it? Uh, Money. Money. She's broke. She paid off all of Tom's debts after he was killed, and then she stuffed her bike into the side of a bus at the Dallas 300, ended up in the hospital stacking up her own medical bills. Uh, Daniel. I'd like to hire you. Uh, I got a few bucks, and you might be the only person she'll listen to. Check out this deal. I don't know why it stinks, but I know it does. There are too many people a little too eager for her to make that jump. Whatever it costs, Dan, huh? Well, who set up this stunt? Who's running this whole show? Oh, finances, the uh, operation, and the whole company being run by some honcho named Grant Packer. You gonna talk to him? Well, uh, not right now. I'm gonna talk to Shara first. I'll take care of it. Thanks, Dan. Mr. Packer, you've been talking too much, Woods. Man, what? 
meaning you've been running your mouth off, saying that Shara's stunt is a death plunge. Ah, that's just good for publicity. I handle the publicity. You're saying it to anyone who will listen. Sometimes the wrong people, like hotshot reporters who are looking for an expose headline. Oh, wait a minute, I don't remember talking to any reporter. Half the time, you don't remember talking at all. The booze oils your tongue. Well, then there's nothing to worry about. Who's gonna play the whole drunk? I don't want anyone to hear him either. Keep your mouth shut, Woods. Drunk and sober. Yes, sir. Who was that you were talking to? Oh, uh, good old friend Shara and I knew from back in the dirt track days. All right. Just keep the bikes running and not your mouth. Coleman will be keeping an eye on you. Yes, sir. Still got it, Sharon. <laughs> well, the old body stays pretty fit because I work at it. <laughs> Every year it gets a little tougher to stay in trim, though. Wouldn't hurt if you did a little of this yourself. Oh, I do it. Uh, I just don't look as good as you do. <laughs> okay. Go ahead and ask. You know me too well. Okay, it's the jump. The last men who tried it failed at 150 feet. And you're gonna do 165 through fire, right? That's right. And I'm gonna make it. Oh, Dan, I just didn't wake up in the middle of the night with a vision. This leap has been mathematically computed. I'm lighter than he was, the bike is lighter than his, and it's also aerodynamically designed for additional lift and soaring ability. The calculations are all down on paper. The calculations aren't going to be on that bike. You are. Dan, it's what I do for a living. I do stunts on motorcycles. I earn the money I need. It's, it's what I do. I know it's what you do, but this stunt is different. Look, I won't have to worry about money again. Plus, I'll have a permanent job promoting bikes for one of the biggest manufacturers in the world. I make the jump, I have the deal. Oh, now look. You can join me in the rest of my workout or ruin your health on pleasures. There'll be no spectators while I sweat. Dantown Investigations. Beatrice, what do you got for me? Uh, nobody, no messages, Dan. Okay, I want you to check on a Nevada corporation called uh, Packer Enterprises, the stockholders and the ownership. I got it. Where are you going to be? I'm going to stop by and see Grant Packer himself, and then I'll be in. OK, bye-bye. Mr. Packer. Yes? My name is uh, Dan Chen. I'm a private investigator. <laughs> I haven't missed an alimony payment in years. <laughs> well, I haven't done any divorce work in years. I just want an opinion. Is this going to be a super stunt or a spectacular death? Your words are Bill Woods. Well, I happen to see you with him. Uh, Mr. Tanner, Bill Woods is on the payroll as a charity case. Shara pulled him out of an alcoholic detox ward and put him to work. Woods gets drunk and tells everybody that Shara's going to kill herself. Well, when I talked to him, he didn't sound that drunk. How drunk is that drunk? Now, look. I'm Shara's manager and a partner in this. I promoted this stunt. I want it to be successful. Now, why don't you go to work for me? These are the feasibility studies from three independent consultant firms. Study them. Check into everything. Show me the stunt can't be done, and I'll cancel it. Sounds fair enough. The fee? Oh, don't worry about the fee. Uh, Shara's an old friend of mine. I'd like for it to be successful myself. Talk to you later. Look, 
Guy Tan is a private investigator. Woods has him asking a lot of questions. That lush, you don't take advice so good, does he? Yes, well, he's caused enough trouble. It's time to lose him for good. Make it look like the booze did it. What about Tanner? Why'd you give him the feasibility plans? <laughs> they won't mean a thing. I took out the last page. Let's see how good he is. Hopefully he's not too good. He could get himself killed. It's only got two wheels to begin with. Why don't you try using them both? <laughs> well, when the bike leaves the ramp, I raise the front wheel, and then at the right time, I land the back wheel. Otherwise, I'd be doing a 200-foot somersault. Don't tell me anymore. I don't want to hear it unless you called me here to scare me. No, it's Bill. He didn't show up this morning, and I can't find him, and I haven't seen him since yesterday. Well, Shara, I don't need to tell you that Bill Woods has got a bit of a problem. Say it. He's a drunk. Has been for 20 years. But it's never stopped him from doing his job. He's always where he's supposed to be. And he's never, never gone on a binge when he's needed. Yeah. Well, I can't argue with you there. OK, I'll try to find him. OK, thanks. I got to get back. Uh, Dan Tana. B, see if you can locate Binzer and have him meet me at the jump site. Oh, I just spoke to him. He's at the circus circus trying to beat the balloon toss out of a pink panther. Then call Professor Tull and see if he can meet me at his place at around 2.30. And those feasibility reports I showed you, check on the firms, make sure they're legitimate. You understand? Uh, Dan, who's paying for all this? Well, I've had a lot of offers, but I haven't seen any cash yet. Talk to you later. Yes, I am, but, uh, well, I'll need a raise. I have a, a partner now, and we work together. Yeah, that's good. It gives you somebody to talk to. He heard that. OK, I want you to find Bill Woods, Sheriff Stanley's mechanic. He's a drinker. He's probably on a binge. Oh, come on, where am I going to find him? He could be any place. You know, there are a few places you can buy liquor in this town. Yes, I know. Uh, check with Lieutenant Nelson or Bella, see if he's been arrested or hospitalized. If that's no good, get a picture from Shara Stanley, then check all the bars downtown. That's his style. Got it? Yeah. Uh, I'm gonna need a little pocket money, expenses and stuff. How much did that pig monster cost you? Don't be a nasty guy. 25 cents. Of course, I, I lost $61 on the way to winning him. <laughs> So uh, what do I do if I find this guy Woods? Well, you and your partner sober him up and then call me at Professor Tolan's house on Route 10. I'll be taking a crash course in engineering. Engineering, of course. Have a nice time. Nice to see you both. Good. Don't say hello unless you have some information for me. Hello, Dan. Ah, very good. What have you got? Well, the check on the Packer Enterprises came out OK. It's a legitimate corporation. Now, I'm still working, though, on the consulting firms. Well, that's very good. Binder's looking for Woods. Did you see the panther you won? See it? I hired it. What else you got? Oh, yeah, Mr. Tolan called. He said you're a half hour late. You're losing your touch, Daniel. Talk to you later, B. I'm at Tolan's place now. Uh, OK, bye-bye.
You're late. Is your name Tanner? Uh, yes, sir, it is. What's your Christian name? Uh, uh, Daniel. Daniel. Yes, sir. I'll call you Dan. Is that all right? Yeah, that'd be fine. Yeah. Well, you're late. Come over here. I'll tell you. I'll tell you how late you are. You're <laughs> 39 minutes and 15 seconds late. Well, yes, sir, I'm sorry. Yes, well, I should think so. And I'll tell you something else. I don't work for nothing. Can you afford to pay me? Well, uh, sure. How much? Oh, I don't know how much. That's not important. We can talk about that later. But I tell you, I work, you see. I earn my way. Yes, sir. I'm, I may be old. I don't quite know how old I am, but lots of people think I'm too old, but I still earn my way. Is that understood? Well, how could I argue with someone with their own Air Force? <laughs> no, not unless you've got a couple of models of your own, is it? Oh, no, sir. Oh, what a shame. We could have had a bit of fun. We could have had an air duel. You could have chosen your weapons, bombers, uh, or anything you like, jets, uh, biplanes, <laughs> whatever. Well, I'm afraid I would have had to unconditionally surrender my yes. forces. All right, then. Haven't you got any plans? I thought you were oh, bringing some uh, plans. Yes. Oh. That's it. That's more like it. Yes, sir. You hold that. All right. Now, come along. Come with me, and I'll explain these plans to you as best I can. So you think this tunnel work? Wait a minute, I'll do the talking. Wait a minute now. <laughs> I was just asking. Yes, well, all right. I think the um, calculations of this report are all right, but they haven't left much room for error. You see, even the finest machines in the world vary under different circumstances and under pressure and that mm. sort of thing. I really need some more information. What do you suggest? Um, when is it possible for me to meet the lady? What's her name? Stanley, Mrs. Sheriff Stanley. Sheriff Stanley? I think she'd like to meet you very much. You do? Yes. Bring her along, then. All right. Yes. How about tomorrow? Come tomorrow. Come early. I get up at dawn. <laughs> That's right. Bring her tomorrow. OK, tomorrow. Bring the lady oh. okay. and your checkbook. I will. Thank you. Hello there, hello. Side Tolan, yes. Who do you want? Tanner, Mr. Yeah, I think I'm... He's here, yeah. It's for you. It's for you. <laughs> yes? Dan? Hi, Binter. Listen, I found Woods. Well, the police found Woods. He's dead. Where are you? At the Savoy Motel. Okay, Binter, listen, uh, pick up Sheriff Stanley and meet me back there. Okay. I'm really sorry. Right. See you in the morning. Yes, in the morning. that Bill Woods killed Bill Woods. He drank himself to death. Checked into this motel drunk with three bottles of bonded poison. Of course, we have to wait for the autopsy report. But from everything I've seen before, that's a natural end to a boozer. Dave, this is a scotch bottle. Bill Woods was a confirmed bourbon drinker. Come on, Dan. How many lushes do you know that read the brand labels on bottles? I'll talk to you later. Thanks, Dan. more than you expect. So if you need some help, I still have some cash available. No, thanks. I can handle it. He was family. I'm just beginning to realize that Bill's not going to be around anymore. I think I'd be getting used to it by now. 
First Tom and now Bill. Sure, I know I'm not going to win any awards for my timing, and maybe this is too direct, but call off the stunt. Why? This? I'm mourning a dead friend. What's that got to do with the jump? I don't think Bill Woods drank himself to death. It's what the police said. It's what the police said it looked like. Do you ever remember Bill Woods drinking anything other than bourbon? No. I'm convinced that his death had something to do with this stunt. I mean, he asked me to check it out. He was concerned about it. If he won't cancel it, at least postpone it. Dan, that's impossible. All of the advertising and publicity are out. We're locked in. It goes as scheduled. Then at least answer a few questions. Who would have anything to gain by you being killed? Well, I don't think about getting killed or even hurt. Nobody in this business does. We think invulnerable. Well, that sounds like a healthy philosophy most of the time, but not in this case. Will you answer the question? Nobody would gain. I don't have any insurance. Premiums for daredevils are exorbitant. Next question. Well, it's uh, sort of a request. Would you mind discussing this stunt with a friend of mine? He's an expert. Expert what? Well, at 80 years old, he's an expert at almost anything he wants to be, mostly aerodynamics. Uh, that's got to be Benzer. Do you have a picture of Bill Woods? Yes, I do. I took these the other day. I might have some others. Now, these will do. Benzer, the labels on the scotch bottles are from Ready Liquor Sales. I want you to go over there, see if they remember selling the booze to Bill Woods. Ready Liquor Sales is a chain. They're all over Vegas. And there are 10 of them I checked. It's a long shot, but it's worth a try. So why don't the police give it a try? <laughs> because they're satisfied that the death was not suspicious. I'm not. What if I am? Who cares? Good point. Where's your partner? Guarding the car. <laughs> you ready to travel? Well, that's part of Professor Tolan's Air Force. Don't worry, if we weren't welcome, it'd probably drop a bomb. Well, little planes, little ramps. Is this man Tolan an engineer or a toy freak? I heard that. I've got amazing hearing. If you want to know who I am, I'm an aeronautical engineer with a pretty good record. Uh, uh, well, I'm sorry. I, I didn't know. Didn't know that I could hear? Come over here. Now then, before I save your life, my dear, remember I don't want to have any involvement with equal rights, ERA, or anything like that. I think I'm smarter at my job than you are. Yes, but I'm nothing like as pretty, am I? <laughs> or as brave, for that matter. God bless you. Daniel, you can throw away your checkbook. <laughs> Come over Thank here, you. I'll show you something. As you see, I'm a great believer in using scale models for testing, you see? Now then, this particular ramp is now set up in mathematical scale to simulate Mrs. Stanley's jump. Right. Now, I think the thing to do is to use that machine. Use that machine, will you? Me? Anna? Yes, you, yes. I haven't been on one of those since I was a kid. Well, pretend you're a kid again and enjoy yourself. Off you go. <laughs> Better try it on the ramp. Can you hear me? Yes, uh, it, yes. It's set at 31 miles per hour. You knew I'd spill, didn't you? Well, of course, but I had to show her, didn't I? Well, he could have gotten hurt. This is the perils of being a test pilot. You ready to pay attention now? Well, as a matter of fact, no. Dan and I don't weigh the same. The bikes are different. It doesn't prove anything. Oh, you amaze me. Do you really think I wouldn't make allowances for that? Let me tell you something. The jump that Daniel's just made was mathematically to scale to the one that you're going to attempt. 
but he didn't make it. And you won't either if you don't listen. Why does everyone assume I won't listen? Because you're a woman. That's unfair. I didn't tell you I'd be fair, just brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> now I've got your attention. I'll tell you how to make a successful jump. Now listen to this very carefully. You increase your ground speed to 102, 102 miles an hour, and you have the ramps move five feet closer. But they're set at 165. 160 is still a record. There is a dangerous oh, 2% minus or plus chance of wind variation, but I think with your balance and ability, you'll be able to cope with that. Now, run along. Get on your bike, Miguel. Good luck to you. And Daniel and I will move the ribbon for you. Take that in, all right? Daniel, tight about 15 inches, about a foot and three inches along this way. That's right. That's about right. That's about it. That's you all right? Now then, pull, pull this away. There we are. That ought to do it. Ah, uh, I'm a woman, and I demand the last word. We'll move the ramps five feet closer. <laughs> what a go. Well, let's get back to Vegas. I'd like to talk to Mr. Packer. Well, according to our professor Tolan, the stunt should just be a little shorter, that's all. Yes, you have the word of, of one eccentric old man. And I have proof from three reputable engineering firms. So, if there are any doubts, I think the final decision should be Shara's. Hmm? Shorten the jump five feet. Well, you've earned your feet, Tana. Oh, don't worry about that. I'll just settle for a stunt that's uh, five feet shorter. They said? Yeah, I heard what they said. It's a big deal. It's only five feet. Could be the difference between her making it or not. Five feet less and she makes it. We end up with no payoff. We know this is her last jump. She has to die doing it. Or I don't collect our million dollars of the insurance policy. I'm the only survivor of the corporation. So what do we do? Well, first we make sure that Tana doesn't uncover that insurance policy. I got it in London. Well, so what? He's already proven he's smart. Well, if Tana uncovers that policy, he'll know that Shara's signature was forged. Nail him. <laughs> Fine. But killing Tana ain't gonna spread them ramps apart. Yes, but uh, rigging the motorcycle will. First Tana, then the bike. strikes again. I found him. I found him. Another pink panther? Don't be nasty. I found the guy that sold the booze to Woods. He's out to dinner. He said he'd be back about uh, 7. What's your location? Uh, 1018 South Trenton. Okay, meet me back there at 7. Okay. told him. The picture came in late last night. I wouldn't sell him because he was bombed out of his mind. What was he buying? Bourbon. He started to give me heat. I was gonna flip him. Then his buddy walks in, cold sober. He pays with a 50, leaves me the change, and bugs out. Do you remember what the second guy looked like? 
What do you think? I'm gonna forget somebody who gives me an $18 tip? This ain't exactly the Waldorf, you know what I mean? Yeah. Well, there's a $20 tip. My name is Tana. I want you to remember me the same way. And if I send a friend in here for the same information, you take care of him, too, okay? Hey, um, at these prices, he can even have a bottle. Right. Okay, I'll call Nelson and pull him in, all right? Why don't you call from inside? The phone works inside. Binzer, we just found ourselves a witness. We call the cops from in there, we can lose him just as fast. Why didn't I think of that? Beats me. Nelson will handle him with a little charm and maybe another 20 bucks. Then we're home free. Yeah. Lieutenant Nelson, please. <laughs> I think I lost my dime. What is it? Sure, I have to talk to you. It's important. What's the matter? It's the stunt. I want you to postpone it for a few days. Now, come on, Dan. We've been through this before. The answer is no. I know we've been through it before, but this time I want you to listen to me. Now, I think someone killed Bill Woods. He did not drink himself to death, and a few minutes ago, someone tried to kill me. Look, Dan, Bill was an alcoholic. It doesn't matter who bought him the booze. And you're in the kind of business that can get you shot at without having anything to do with me. That also could mean that somebody's trying to kill you. Well, use all these flowers for your funeral. That's terrific. Now, you have to listen to me. I've read every one of the reports from the consulting firms. One of them was a full five dry, boring pages long. Now, I am perfectly aware of the danger of the stunt. And I'm going to make it. Maybe life or death or not. But I can accept the fact that I might get killed. And the fact that there's other danger still only means that I might get killed. It's still only once. Now, that is crazy. I can accept that. It's what I do. It's my way of life. It doesn't have to be yours. Dan. I care about you. I care about you, too. And I thank you for all the help you've given me and the friendship. But I want you off this case. If I have to gamble with my life, I... I don't want any more friends gambling with theirs. Thought you never came out of your workshop, Professor. <laughs> I thought I'd learn how to be a spectator. <laughs> hey, uh, did you learn any more about the attempt on your life? Well, Lieutenant Nelson's working on it, but I still think it has something to do with this jump. You sure you won't change your mind and call it off? I'm sure. The jump is on. Doesn't look like he talked her out of it. I'll find out for sure. Give me another shot at ten. She's going through with it. There's no rush to take him out. It's time we rigged the bike. After the stunt, we'll have all the time we need to get Tana. met over breakfast like real people. I'm hungry. Uh, listen, Benzer, I just want you to hang around the jump area for the next couple hours. Keep your eyes on Shara and the bike, okay? What am I looking for? I don't know. How am I supposed to know when I see it? Just keep your eyes open. Bring me some waffles, will you? Sure. Strawberries! Are you sure about this, Mr. Drake? 
Just a minute, Mr. Drake. I'm sure that Mr. Tanner would like to speak to you himself. Dan? I have Mr. Drake, the chief engineer from the second consulting firm. I think you should hear this yourself. Yes, Mr. Drake. I've already told your secretary that I prepared a report on the Shara Stanley stunt. Uh, yes, sir, I know. I just have one question. Your report states that this stunt is theoretically possible, but did you make any recommendations, any measures that might make it more safe? Of course I did. Look at the last page. Page six. I recommended that she cut the length of the jump ten feet. There is no page six. Uh, who did you send this report to? People who paid me. Packer Enterprises. Mr. Grant Packer. Thank you very much, Mr. Drake. The first consulting firm said the same as the second. You want me to get in touch with the third firm? No, I've got enough already. Two of the firms made recommendations that the stunt would work if it were 10 feet shorter. Now, Packer received that report, and he deleted the information. He kept it at 165. Yeah, but uh, you fixed that already. Yeah, well, Packer's got to figure out another way now to make that stunt not work. Rigging the motorcycle would be perfect, wouldn't it? How much time do we have? It's time to go now. You ready? I'm ready. this extravaganza and an attempt at the world's longest leap through space on a motorcycle by the talented and lovely Miss Shara Stanley.
Damn! Come here! Come here! That guard, he's the one that tried to shoot you! Did he touch the bike? He was guarding it! <laughs> Wake up! Wake up, dammit! What did you do to the bike? Wake up! Saving your life. Don't bother to thank me. Wait, the bike has been rigged. Ladies and gentlemen, can we have your attention, please? Now, this stunt is going to be temporarily postponed. Please bear with us. What did you do with the bike packer? Wait. Under the seat. There we are. Oh, that too, will you? Now, then, let's see. Ah, yes. Thank you. Oh, my God. Good heavens. This would have taken ten feet off the jump. It would have killed you, my darling. Well, it won't now. No, it won't now. God bless you. What's that? 